Back with Chris Leon from Garden State Tortoise. Today we're inside his, I guess, what do you call it? Your turtle room. Tortoise building. Tortoise building. There you go. <laughs> we're going to see some species that he keeps here in New Jersey that are a little bit more delicate and don't really go outside. So come on back and he'll uh, school us on a few things. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. Pretty psyched to see this species. We're inside the tortoise building at the Garden State Tortoise Facility. I like to get all official. Everyone <laughs> likes to say they have a facility, but uh, in fact, it's, it's Chris's home. But we're looking at the Egyptian tortoise. And here's something that I had no idea. I mean, we're already learning so much. Um, Talk to me about these guys, what they like, why they're indoors, and um, you know, tell me about this species. I don't know too much. They're um, technically, and, and I have an article out right now, Reptiles Magazine, about them, and it's they they titled the article "The Perfect Indoor Tortoise." Okay. And they really are, you know, especially for this area. You know, I don't know too many people anywhere in the U.S. that have too much success trying to keep them outside. I think maybe in Arizona you, okay. you could. I don't know. I don't want to say you know if you really can't, but especially up here. The humidity, the unpredictability of the weather, the rain, the, obviously the winter, there's no way. So we house them indoors and they really do well. And you can help to, you have you have better control over them too when they're they're in this kind of setting. You can create microclimates for them. You can, you know, always be on top of them to make sure they're all right. And when they're set up right indoors and they're not subjected to anything that can, you know, send them down the tubes, they really thrive. They really do fine, you know. So overall, I would say that they're a sensitive species. But if you set them up right, you keep them indoors with everything that they need. They're no different than... And, and the know. other key is that full-grown, show us a full-grown egg-laying female right here. Check this out. There it is. Full-grown egg-laying female Egyptian tortoise. Uh, we were hanging out. Maurice Rodriguez, good old buddy of mine, is somewhere out there right now. And he made a comment. He said, you find these animals on the coast of Egypt. So they're, they're near the Mediterranean. In Libya, yeah. Uh, in Libya. Um, so what is the scoop as far as the humidity situation? Because I thought no humidity, low humidity, right. but as we will learn, he mentioned microclimate. So important in tortoise and reptile husbandry. Uh, what we can feel standing up at about six foot tall is way different when you're an inch off the ground. Right. So what, what do you have you created specifically to, to maintain a humid hide for these guys? Well, first and foremost, they, they have uh the substrate is fairly deep enough to where it's moist, you know, further down. Okay. So if the tortoises want to get to it, they can. They're not particularly a, bur a burrowing species, but they do take to crevices and make scrapes and stuff. So if they want okay. to get to that moisture, they, they can. And on top of that, they just have plenty of areas, visual barriers, places that they can get out of the extreme heat because these are very hot lights. And, um, you know, we do morning mists with them too. Every cool. morning when I open up the building, I give them a nice mist because they would get that coastal mist. Exactly. And a lot of testudo tortoises do. A lot of them, some of the different Hermans and Greeks are found on the coast too, and they're subjected to that, but it, it dries up real quick. Okay. But Mar what Maurice was saying too is where they go underneath these root systems of these grasses, they're feeling, what did he say, 75% humidity? 75 humidity, which is pretty amazing. So, I mean, I love the enclosure. This is a really great tortoise table. It's a, this should give you guys ideas. You can apply this for any tortoise species, just adjust for size of the animal. Um, really, really beautifully done. High enough to where the tortoises, even if they stack on each other, they're not going to cl crawl out and fall on the floor. Always keep that in mind. But you can see how nicely he's done. And I have to tell, I have to give him some props, man. Uh, this guy has only been in this house six months. He has done a heap of work. Um, <laughs> and he has a new baby as well. And a wife that probably, if she wasn't a zookeeper, would probably have kicked your butt out a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. So he's very lucky. But let's move uh, to another really cool species of small uh, tortoise. And this is uh, the Chirsi which the common name is bowsprit or angulate tortoise. There you go, angulated tortoise is what I was going to drop, but you go ahead. And and the cool thing, uh, or I should say, what Chris is doing right now, he's handling all the animals because I, I wasn't able to sanitize. So he's going to handle everything and give us the uh, information on beautiful little species. Now, these guys live in a high population density in their native Ooh, habitat, yeah. don't they? There's, I think they're. Um, um, one of one of if not the highest densities of, of tortoises anywhere uh, the southern uh, african cape um and i think uh david attenborough yes. did right yeah. that's where i actually yeah. remember seeing these guys and they just run all over the place yeah it's and, incredible but again you know and maurice is a wealth of knowledge with this stuff he was telling me too that the winters that these tortoises are subjected to are cold and rainy 
I mean, they just get rained on, and it's cold, you know? And you think Africa... Right. Well, that's know? the other thing, guys, is, is you really need to do your homework. Maurice Rodriguez, I wish Maurice would just pop his head in. He's, <laughs> he is a wealth of knowledge. He's actually traveled to a lot of these places with the Turtle Conservancy. And um, basically, it's so important to really do your homework on the environments these animals come from, because so many times you think, oh, Africa, it's hot. Yep. That's not the case. Uh, there, there have been accounts of leopard tortoises with some snowfall near them. Uh, there's, uh, you know, you look in Central America, the higher you go up in elevation, the cooler it's going to get. So really important. But, you know, what are, what are some of the challenges you face for this particular species here in New Jersey? They seem to, you know, overall, they, they, they're very, um, they're fair captives. You know, okay. they're not, I would never recommend them for a beginner. Okay. Um, they're flighty, you know. Um, you know, I mean, you see compared to like some of the other species here that come right up to you. These guys are really in no hurry to do it. Some of them will, you know, come out of their shell. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're not one that's going to run to you. They kind of really like to be left alone. That's why I give them so many different places to hide. And I don't keep the whole group together. You know, there's some animals in here and then there's oh, more I down see. there. Um, and never keep males together. Okay. The males fight and they joust with... Their Gula projection. Their Gula projection, which the that. name Bowsprit comes from. Check that out, everybody. That is so cool, man. And they'll do it in captivity. It's no exception. You know, so you don't keep them together so that you don't, you know, end up losing anybody unnecessarily. But um, they uh, they have become my biggest challenge with reproduction. Okay. Okay. I've gotten egg after egg after egg and all the different methods and my buddies at Turtle Conservancy are trying to help me, you know. Um, can't really figure it out. Um, I've hatched one, okay. one, but the poor thing lived only 48 hours. Bummer, man. No idea why. It just, you know. So overall, they're they're fair captives. They real they're a joy to keep. They're very easy to house indoors, you know. And um, I'm waiting for the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel with them as far as reproduction goes. Well, definitely follow along on his Instagram page, Garden State Tortoise, and uh, I know you'll be posting if you do have some success with them. Yes. Let's see, we got one more species to show you folks in here. One of my favorites, uh, they go by a couple names. The first name uh, is the black-breasted leaf turtle. Uh, he's gonna go get a little worms out of the refrigerator as you keep, you know, you gotta keep worms a little cool. There we go. Oh, there's Maurice right there, see? There he is, just jibber-jabbering back there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do some fun stuff here. Here. Follow Chris. We're talking about uh, the Spengleri. Is it Geomida? Ge what is it now? The, the Geo Geo Geomida Spengleri. Spengleri. And there's one more, the Japonica Geomida is Japonica. also in that. Um, but wait until you see these guys. These are a very active, forest dwelling, terrestrial turtle species from Vietnam and Southeast Asia. And watch this. Look at this. These guys are so alert, man. So much fun to watch them eat. And again, these guys like cooler mountain mountain environments, yeah. right? Yep, they're at home in cooler temperatures. It gets a little bit too warm for them in here, but um, they they do see they can still tolerate extremes, you know. That's so funny. There he yeah, goes. There he goes. Watch this. This is a, a full-on tortoise hunt, turtle hunt. <laughs> Look at those big eyes too. <laughs> oh, so rad. <laughs> Not for the worm, but you know what, it is It yeah. is necessary here, folks. So if you're sensitive to earthworms being eaten... Maybe not the species for you. Yeah, maybe not the species for you. <laughs> for but uh, we got another one here we're going to feed. Um, and have you had any breeding success with these? Not yet. Not yet, um, okay. Uh, you know, the turtle room in general is working wonders with them. Anthony is uh, really doing well with them. He just had the book come out on them. Very cool. And... Uh, you know, they're, they're another really just perfect indoor species, you know? So this, well, look at the eyes on this one. This is a female. Yep. No way. This is Gojira. Go oh, right, I love it. My wife name. Named it Gojira, huh? Yep. Uh, that's good old Godzilla. <laughs> Check She's it out. She's got the appetite of him. Oh man, that's so rad. But you see how those eyes, they focus in, almost like binocular vision in a way, to really, they, these guys hunt. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> She's not so sure. It's a little yeah. dirty. She cleaned it off, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, then again, 
Whenever you expect something to happen with a it turtle, doesn't. it doesn't. But uh, I promise you, they are really active, really funny little species of turtle. A little more wiggling. Here we go. Finger. Yeah, you almost <laughs> lost a finger there, Chris. Uh, here we go. There's some wiggling. All right. There we go. Now we know the animal's got its meal and it's gonna take off and eat it in privacy. Yep. All right, fantastic, man. Well, you know what? We got to see three really unique species. Um, I really applaud Chris for all the work he's done here. Thanks so much for letting me hang out, dude, on this very nice, warm, feels just like home. Man. Yeah, it's My cameraman and Chris are sweating like maniacs, and I'm just loving this right now. <laughs> uh, we got more to do, so we'll talk to you guys all soon. Check him out uh, at his website and on Instagram.